गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ लॉन्ग बोन और इवन इट इज गुड फॉर द शॉर्ट बोन्स ऑल्सो एंड दिस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द लॉन्ग बोन इज कॉल्ड एज एंड्रोकॉन्ड्रोल ऑसिफिकेशन नाउ दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ द बोन फॉर्मेशन विच इज कॉल्ड एज द ऑसिफिकेशन ओके दोज यू न्यूली एडमिटेड स्टूडेंट आई होप दैट इन यूर इंस्टीट्यूट the uh, general anatomy of the bone must be over where you must have learned uh, about the ossification which is of two types mentra membranous ossification and the endochondral ossification today i am going to tell you in very simplified way what is an ossification is especially the endochondral ossification is how the long bones are formed okay long bone or form now the bone formation takes place quite early in the embryonic life or the beginning of the fetal life what is embryonic life the the intrauterine life inside the womb of the mother right from the fertilization till the completion of the first eight week of intrauterine life it is called as the embryo and then the conceptus after this embryo from the third month or from the ninth week till the birth is called as the fetus so this begins at the junction of embryonic age or the fetal age most of the long bones they start their ossification or bone formation by the seventh or the eighth week of the intrauterine life now just see here this i have just drawn a rough diagram of an uh, fetus i say for embryo or the fetus which is not like that just it is a theoretical diagram these are the upper limbs and the lower limbs where the long bones are going to form now to begin with the e skin of an fetus or embryo is formed by the ectoderm okay out of the three germinal layers and the mesoderm forms the core of most of the part of the upper limb now what is mesenchyme mesenchyme are the fetal or embryonic connective tissue and they are responsible for formation of the muscles the connective tissue the bones the cartilage uh, most of the part of the blood vessels and so on and so on okay while the endoderm we will learn later is responsible for the formation of the parts of the gastrointestinal tract okay so we are concentrating on this mesenchyme mesenchymal connective tissue of embryo or fetus they are present in the limb buds and then the first step in formation of the bone is that they just show the formation or the uh, concentration or condensation so the first step in formation is the concentration or condensation of this mesenchyme tissue which are embryonic mesenchymal cell so you can say that there is the first step is mesenchymal condensation condensation now this lecture may be a little longer but it is very important so you keep on noting and be careful about understanding this okay say for example let us see the we take an example of the upper limb say for now i will draw the upper limb see this this is the hand bud this is the forearm and this is say for example the arm structure is here now because of the mesenchymal condition condensation in the arm there is the condensation in the form of a <coughs> cartilaginous modification that means from this mesenchymal condensation a bone i mean say a cartilage is going to form hyaline cartilage which is which will ultimately be replaced by the humerus bone that means bone formation will take place within the replace because of the replacement and in the forearm this two mesenchymal condensation will ultimately give rise to the this radius and ulna bone <coughs> so in the limb bud first what takes place is the mesenchymal condensation is there okay now <coughs> let us now see about the humerus say for example this is the mesenchymal condensation where future humerus is going to form and this mesenchymal cells 
of this condensation will ultimately will become or develop itself into the chondroblast okay what is a chondroblast these chondroblasts they are the cells which i am drawing here they are the cells which are the cartilaginous cells and they secretes the fibers that is collagen fibers and the ground substance a combination of the protein and the carbohydrate and the fibers are secreted by these cells the chondroblast so ultimately this mesenchymal cells will become the chondroblast chondroblast are the cell which will form the cartilage thus the whole mesenchymal condensation is now the cartilaginous cell and this cartilage is a hyaline cartilage and this hyaline cartilage which will ultimately will be the base for the formation of the bone in the arm and that is the humerus for example okay we have just taken one of the example all the long bones they will form like that so mesenchymal condensation condens the mesenchymal cell themselves change into chondroblast and chondroblast secretes the cartilage i mean say they secrete the fibers collagen fibers and the matrix that is the ground substance and thus the whole model of a cartilage which is a hyaline cartilage is formed <coughs> now once the hyaline cartilage a very tiny hyaline cartilage is formed say for example hmm, early in the 6th or 7th week of the intra uterine life hmm, bones there is no long bone all the long bones they are in the form of the cartilage that is the hyaline cartilage so it is a hyaline cartilaginous model of the humerus is there by the 7th week of intra uterine life already form when it is still embryo okay is still embryo now once the cartilage is formed a, a outer membrane is formed on the surface of this cartilage and this i am representing with the help of let me represent with the help of the green color so you can differentiate it with that of the blue color of the hyaline cartilage so i hope that you are seeing this mm, membrane will be covering to this hyaline cartilage and this membrane is called as perichondrium perichondrium this is a fibrous and cellular membrane which covers the hyaline cartilage a cartilage is a vascular structure but this perichondrium which covers the uh, this hyaline cartilage it is highly vascular so remember that cartilage inside is a vascular but perichondrium is highly vascular okay now this model of the hyaline cartilage which is going to form ultimately being replaced not form but replaced by the bone is the model for that of the humerus okay we are the here at the humerus now let us see how this cartilaginous model which is here for the humerus is ultimately will change into the bone so let us come to the next diagram okay now there will be uh, i mean to say some of the cells okay in the center of this model let me draw a bigger diagram now so that you will be able to understand it properly this is i am drawing a bigger diagram here of this model okay cartilage and on outer surface is the uh, perichondrium okay that is the membrane is here just very rough diagram you also keep on drawing with me with the color pencil so that it will be easier except at the end this perichondrium will not cover otherwise it will cover all around now let us see a cross section of this cartilaginous model from that of the middle so there will be suppose we cut a cross section it will be like this and this is completely surrounding to it by the perichondrium okay that is the fibrous membrane is surrounding to it and then this is the hmm, cartilage is here the blue color indicate the cartilage okay here it is the cartilage is inside hyaline cartilage now how the bone formation will begin the actually in this cartilage okay some changes will take place by which the cartilage will be replaced by the bone okay bone now some of the cells okay in this 
the middle of the cartilaginous bone model some of the cells and which were the cells i have already told you they were the chondrocytes which are forming the cartilage they are enlarging they are dividing and forming the new fibers new matrix and then in this way the growth in this cartilage with the age of the fetus is taking place in both the direction proximal end and the, by this time you know what is proximal and what is the distal end of this cartilaginous one in this way the length of the cartilage grows okay now after this hmm, there be by the age of 8th or 9th week or in some cases 7th week the middle region of this uh, uh, cartilaginous model the perichondrium as i said it is made up of cell and fibers outer layer is fibrous and inner layer is cell some of the cell of this perichondrium they will change into the osteoblast cell okay they will change into osteoblast cell in the middle region and they will start forming the bone because osteoblast are the bone forming cell i am drawing this with the yellow color that means there is a formation of the bone is taking place just beneath the perichondrium in the middle of this cartilaginous model a uh, model and this yellow color thing indicate that this is the bone which has formed and I, if i draw it here since it is a cross section there will be a thin layer of the bone in yellow color if you are able to see this will form just beneath the perichondrium because it is a cross section so it is a thin layer will be formed all around in the circle it will be all around suppose it is a longitudinal section of that cartilaginous model so this kind of the bone is a compact bone remember that this is the compact bone which is formed in the middle okay compact bone because you must have learned in general and anatomy the classification of bone as compact and spongy bone okay so this compact bone is formed in the middle and this is called as periosteal or periosteal uh, collar it is known as the periosteal collar okay now this collar why it is called as collar because it is surrounding all okay so this is known as and it is developed from periosteum so this will be called as periosteal hmm, bone collar collar this is the peri just like the collar of the shirt it is the periosteal bone collar has formed now next step what will be the next step once the periosteal bone collar has formed that means it is the beginning of the ossification has started in the seventh or the eighth week of intrauterine life now what will happen that some of the cells which are present in the middle of this cartilaginous model and which are those cells they are chondroblast or chondrocytes they will get enlarged they will become large and this uh, chondroblast they are in the intercellular matrix which is formed by the mm, collagen fibers and the uh, intercellular substance okay that is carbohydrate and protein complex and so these cells will become large and some of the cells chondrocytes will become so large that they will burst and because of that the ph of this central portion of the cartilage will change and this will attract the calcium because the diffusion is bringing the nutrition and the oxygen to these cells because as i told you earlier cartilage is avascular what is vascular was this periosteum that membrane covering to the perichondrium with the membrane covering to this cartilaginous model so these cells here area will start becoming calcified central area and there will be the large cavity because of the death of the hmm, these chondrocytes okay this chondrocytes death will lead to the large cavities or lacuna and they there will be deposition of calcium in surrounding intercellular matrix now the third step in the formation of the bone will be that some of the blood vessels which are in this perichondrium okay or membranous covering because it is highly vascular it will grow so that periosteal bud so the blood vessels will grow from perichondrium and they will come towards the 
center of this where calcified cartilage is present and while they are growing this blood vessels in the cartilaginous model here in the center of which they will bring along with that the chondro i mean say the osteoblast cell osteoblast cells are just note down osteoblast cells are the bone forming cells they are called as osteoblast along with this will also bring some of the i mean to say cells which are present in the center of the cartilage okay in the center of the i mean say which will bring into the growth along with them some of the cell will come from the perichondrium towards the center including the osteoblast cell and those cells some of these which are phagocytic cells osteo uh, class cells which will eat away this calcium and then a new bone formation will begin in the center of this cartilaginous model and the center of this cartilage will become bony okay but this bone since it is in the cavities on the wall of the cavities okay this bone which will form because of the periosteal i mean to say but which will bring the osteoblast the bone formation in the center which is here is called as the primary center of ossification so this is how the primary center of ossification in the middle of the bone will begin okay and this is the first after periosteal bone collar this is the bone formation which will begin in the center but this bone will be in the form of the spongy bone the periosteal bone collar was compact bone but the bone which is formed by the primary center of ossification will be that of the spongy bone